hello hello today I will be featuring what has quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, battleships the T8 North Carolina yes I've already made commentaries on this but honestly this ship is so such a strong ship these days and I feel like I haven't really done it justice just to show how much potential this ship has in pure carrying power and now this map is actually Shatter, which is a map I quite enjoy these, the game, these days. This addition of the Sea Island, which allows you to get very, very close on this side and allows you basically to engage in brawling battle from the get-go, uh, is something I enjoy a lot. Getting, being able to get all the way to the cap undetected as a battleship means any aggressive player, that is like me, enjoys this map a lot. And uh, this whole Shatter map has been very much in my favor. Or, well, very enjoyable to me. Not always in my favor, but very enjoyable because it lets me play that aggressive style. It let me, lets me get into the caps and help my DDs and cruisers and such. And that's something I've been a great fan of. Now, on the right we see Iowa Neptune. On the far left we see an Amagi. I could just slow down so I don't accidentally get torped or give too much broadside to the Iowa. But I'm, of course, taking shots on the Amagi since, well, at long range. The Amagi is a bit weird in that way. Um, at long range, it's quite easy to Citadel, especially with the North Carolina's uh, plunging shells. It seems like you tend to get Citadels fairly easily. But then at close range, for some reason, you tend to struggle getting those. Well, I tend to struggle. I aim at the right spot, I aim at the waterline, but the Citadel is so low right below the waterline that unless you have those plunging shells, it becomes significantly more challenging to actually land them. You can see a Cyclone warning, so there's actually a Cyclone about to hit. This is also a T10 game, as you can see, uh, they have a bunch of high tier ships. So this is going to be a challenging game, to say the least. I'm the lowest tier, it's uh, Shatter, and they're already get, gaining the cap advantage. And we have some, we have an AFK Fubuki, we have a bit of a fail division there with an Atlanta. So, a hard game. But... One of the things I really like about uh, North Carolina is its playmaking capability. Uh, the ship is of course very tanky when you're angled, but also very squishy when you get broadside. And that's those are the kind of, I like those kind of things in ships where they have a very straightforward set of strings and a very straightforward set of weaknesses. Same thing. The, sh the shells deal a lot of damage. They're accurate and they have great plunging capabilities but on the other side the shells are also very slow and they're quite hard to land on faraway targets so once again you have the strengths and you have the weaknesses and that's once again something as I said I enjoy. I enjoy straightforward characteristics of ships and in general these are the kind of ships I always recommend for people to master because it forces you to play around these very set parameters and that's also one of the things the battleships kind of have an advantage in, is that um, you rarely get that those so-called bullshit citadels. I mean, if you face a Yamato shore, but in general, like you're not like a cruiser, where, it, where in a cruiser you can play everything correctly, you can angle perfectly and so forth, but you can still get citadel through the nose, or just get, get some complete bullshit hit on you. That doesn't really happen as often in battleships, so correct play tends to be rewarded a bit more in battleships than it is in cruisers. Of course a Neptune, I'm, I was Raiders or I was Hydra spotted, that meant, meant I knew he was close. And of course gonna go gonna rush him, because I mean a Neptune is very very squishy. Oops, that's too high, that was a bad volley, let's not make that mistake again. Aim at the waterline, right at the middle, blam, deleted. Um, no such mistakes a second time, but I do in fact make a mistake. You saw how easy I was bouncing the Iva shells while I was angled. Well, I got so greedy to rush this Neptune that I completely neglected the Amage that I had just pushed away earlier. And the Amage, of course, reminded me with a happy little 24,000 damage volley to my broadside. So, that was basically what I just said, kind of compressed into a nutshell there. Great accuracy of shells, great damage of shells, great tankiness when angled. But as soon as I give broadside, the Amai instantly punishes me, and I enjoy that. I enjoy because that was a clear set. That was a clear set of plays I made correctly, and that I was rewarded for, and a clear set of clear mistake I also made that I was punished for. And that's something I quite enjoy in this game when 
when you know exactly what your boundaries are and you just need to learn how to play around this. Now of course I shoot, I was undetected, I shoot again and I get detected which means I have to turn hard left because if the Amagi is shooting me again I cannot afford to give him broadside while I'm doing this. So I'm angling against him just in case. Also there's his volley, this time he only did 4k damage because I'm angled and of course because we've spotted a gearing and another DD at B, angling away is also a good idea so I don't get torped to absolute shit. But once again, angling makes life much easier for me. Instead of the 24k volley, I take a 4k volley. Now, the game isn't looking very good for us though. We are... Well, we still have our AFK Fubuki, which means we are basically down two ships at this point, and they have a cap advantage. I'm trying to land some volleys on the Des Moines, who's sitting very far away and barely moving. But at these ranges, you can see the shell speed. It takes 12 seconds for the shells to land there. And hitting a cruiser with that kind of travel time is not that easy. Our Shimo is also in our base, where he's probably not very useful. So our only hopes is this one Fletcher. The Cyclone finally hit though, which is the only reason I've been sailing this way still and keeping angled is of course because of this Amagi. I didn't want to repeat my mistake of giving him broadside, so I waited until the cyclone hit, so the vision got limited, and now I'm able to finally turn away. Now I'm tempted to go into the cap, but considering they have a Fletcher and Kutuzov, and an Iva going around the other flank, they even have a Shimakaza going around there, uh, I think, I probably since I'm already this far south, I'm going to try to go for the flank, meaning I'll go around the island. Usually, if flanks take too long, they're not worth it, but in this case, I feel, considering uh, we're down and we need some angling firepower, they have a lot of battleships, I feel like uh, this is a good time to try to pull off a flank, especially in the North Carolina, which is a fairly fast battleship, actually. You can see I'm already, I'm almost hitting 29 knots, which means you are able to pull off these kind of fast moves. So the idea is, of course, to go for the flank. While they are occupied with these guys, I'll flank them from the back, and hopefully we can make something happen. Sadly, though, they have a Friedrich der Grosse in their spawn. I have no idea why he's there. Based on his angle, he's not even going for the flank. He was just basically going here to hide or something. I have no idea. Regardless, of course, uh, I don't want to actually fight him. He has a huge HP advantage. I can't sit at all him. He has a tier advantage. His secondaries are much better. This is a brawling fight, which German battleships are the best at. I'm, wonder I'm questioning what he's even doing here, but anyway, I kind of fool him, I turn right towards him, make it look like I basically want to fight him, I angle right, in right towards him, I hit him with some really hard hitting volleys, that's an 11k volley of course, so a couple of hard hitting volleys make it think like I really want to go and fight him, so he angles away, and uh, he angles away and he starts shooting me back, once again you see angled North Carolina, I take almost no damage, so I make him fear me and he turns away and now a bit too late he realizes wait a minute I didn't actually want to fight him but I've already hit full reverse because I can't afford to waste time trying to whittle down a Friedrich de Grosse that's kiting away from me when my team is struggling in the middle. And, f and second of all if the enemy has a cap advantage any time you spend fighting away from control points is time you spend playing in your enemy's favor. If you have two caps and the enemy have one cap and you occupy one of their ships outside of the caps, that means you're constantly gaining points. You're constantly gaining them and they're constantly losing. You're constantly winning the game, they're constantly losing the game. It's in your advantage to occupy ships outside of the caps because even if you happen to lose that fight, uh, they still haven't really gained any a significant tactical advantage. So wasting time fighting this battleship down here while they have a cap advantage is of course not in my favor. Especially since we're two against four now. So I need to, first of all, I need to move into B, focus on it. Second of all, I need to help my Hindenburg. Uh, try to make it, instead of being oh, this 1v1, we need to make it, or 1v2, I need to go help him. The Friedrich de Grosse understood, finally caught on to what I was doing. But I've already executed, well, a three-point turn there, basically. I reversed, turned around, and got the hell out of there. So, uh, he's now trying to chase me, but I'm angled away from him, so I don't care. I'm rushing into B, we're 300 points to 700. I need to get into a much better uh, position. My flanking move, which was actually even looking at it now, I thought theoretically it was a sound move. 
a sound tactic, but because this surprise Friedrich de Grosse, it didn't really work out. But there was no way I could have known that. That was a bit too hasty, since I already know now that he's turning away. I could have saved it and instead taken the shot perhaps now when he's giving me a, a bigger broadside where I would have been better able to punish him. So a bit hasty that volley and haste is of course something I dislike in battleships. You kind of want to take your time with your shots, but I guess I'm feeling a bit harried with this battleship behind me, who I know is basically breathing down my neck. The Ibuki though turns broadside, that's an instant punish. Oh, helping out my Hindenburg there, and now we can two-man this North Carolina. Now, I'm not afraid to show this broadside, because of course the North Carolina's guns are aimed the wrong way, because he just executed a turn. So here I take my time and go straight for the Citadel. Only one Citadel, one overpen, one, one shell completely missed it appears. Turning my ship into angle and at the same time trying to get behind this mountain so I can uh, get out of line of sight from this Friedrich de Grosse. Again, only one Citadel, but combined this volley I just did with the back and front turret was still 42,000 damage or so. So it makes it very easy for the Hindenburg to finish him off. Now, I want to turn behind the island to get into cover, but I see his position, so I just keep going straight. Uh, if I would turn hard left now, yes, I'm about to hit the wreck, and there's not much I can do about it, because turning hard left now means I give up my angle, and uh, that means I'm gonna get wrecked. I also want to give time for my turrets to turn before I start turning, so I can actually shoot back at him. I often mention people tend to turn their ships before their guns have turned, which is something I condemn highly, because... Uh, Doing that means you give broadside without able to actually fire back. I only land two shells, but we actually trade fairly equally in damage. But here comes the the problem I mentioned earlier. His secondaries are far superior to mine. Uh, they are the Bismarck secondaries that he basically have, has, and they shoot HE, they start multiple fires. So a brawling type of fight with him is something I expect to lose. So I'm just keeping myself angled and... Uh, trying to keep his attention on me and hoping that the Hindenburg can get close enough to make something work. He's giving me still broadside though, and he sh I'm angled, his volley did zero damage, my back turrets alone did 9000 damage. Here comes the issue though, the Amage, the one that sailed off in the start, he's finally returning. So I'm forced to angle, I'm turning hard to angle against the Amage, which also forces me to give broadside. So I'm, now I'm kind of in a dice situation where I have to angle against both of, both of these. Choosing my back turrets again, trying to move in behind this line of sight. I just need to survive a couple more seconds since the Hindenburg during this time that that guy has been focusing me, the Hindenburg goes in for the YOLO rush. And now I can finally get into cover. This is where you need to take stock of your consumables. I'm down to 4.8k HP, but I do have a spotter plane, which means I can keep this guy spotted for us with the help of a plane. And my heal is about to come up. So. Playing for time right now is in my favor, and of course, as long as you have a cap advantage, playing for time is also always in your favor. So I decide full speed, and I'm going to use line of sight. I'm letting my, my letting my Hindenburg know. Uh, this has, has of course the advantage of if he aims, he has to choose where to aim his guns. Does he aim them to the right for the Hindenburg? Does he aim them to the left for me? And uh, this this way, I am forcing him into a crossfire position. And his guns are aimed at me, which is of course pretty goddamn good, for my Hindenburg gets three shots at him now, while he is completely focusing on me. That's perfect. Of course the Hindenburg is sadly using HE and not AP, a Magi. On a Magi broadside from that range he could probably do 10k per volley with AP, but can't be helped. 14k volley. I'm still fairly well angled. He does get a good penetration on me, but most of his shells actually hit the land, because I'm keeping the landmass between us. So, I still have 10k to play with, well, 9k to play with now. Keeping myself angled, I'm going to ground once again, just like with hitting the wreck. It's not a big issue as long as you're only fighting one assailant and you're angled against him. There comes his volley, but I'm angled enough that he only does 4000 damage, whereas I'm still punishing him with some heavy hits. The Hindenburg is not doing as much as I'd hoped to this Amagi. But at least he's getting some... well, he's launching torps. He's still spamming HE though. So he's getting some work done. Keeping myself angled. Just patiently buying time at this point for the Hindenburg to make stuff work. My guns are finally reloaded. 
No citadels, as I said, this is the guy I citadel earlier quite easily. But I'm gonna turn and use my front guns now, and this should be enough to finish the kill even without citadels. And it is. So that was a quite destructive comeback, but it also kind of shows just how much carry potential this North Carolina ha has. 657k credits, uh, 225,000 damage, and uh, topping the scores against T10 matchmaking, which is, of course, very, very satisfying. And really, this North Carolina is a very straightforward ship, but just because it's straightforward doesn't necessarily mean that it's very easy to play. It's still a challenging ship, but I, I really enjoy it. It's very satisfying to play. And of course, I'm 2.7 million potential damage. That just shows how much I tanked. And as usual, you can find the build. Well, I can link my old North Carolina commentary where I show my build in case any of you are wondering.